So we're going to use these notes to factor standard form quadratic trinomials when the a value is not equal to 1. Okay, so when you actually have a number right here, like a 3, 4, 5, or 6, um, and there's many steps to it. Um, step 1 is to multiply a times c. A is this number, C is this number, so you just multiply those guys together and you get an answer for step one. Step two, it says think of the multiples of that number from step one. Think of the multiples of that number from step one that combine to give you the B value, which is up here. So you know what? I want everybody to do this on your notes. Um, let's jot down on step two, make a list. Man, that is so disgusting. Make a list for step two. After you make that list, um, you move on to uh, think which pair of numbers gives you the B value, which is kind of like what we did before. But then step three is where it gets weird. Step three says get that pair of numbers from step two and write them as the denominators of two fractions with the A value as a numerator. You're probably thinking, what the heck is going on, right? Um, all you got to do is take the a value from up here, and you're going to write that as the numerator of two fractions, right here and here. And the pair of numbers from step two go as denominators, okay? And step three uh, is to make these two fractions, and step four is to simply reduce and plug it into your answer format, okay? So step four is reduce and plug. So whatever fraction you have up here, up here you reduce them, and you get your new reduced fractions, and after that, you simply take the uh, top number, the numerator, and put it right in front of your x. And the uh, bottom number right here goes by itself at the end. Okay. Uh, once again, the top number on the fraction goes in front with the x, and the bottom number goes out here at the end. You might want to draw those arrows in your notes. So the only way to get good at this is to actually practice it using the steps. So let's take a look at this example right here. And let's go through the steps. Step one, everybody, write down a one, nice and tiny right there. Step one is a times c, which would be six times negative three. And what is six times negative three? Negative 18. That is my answer for step one, done. Let's move on to step two. What does step two say? Think of the multiples of that number from step one. And we just also wrote down, make a list to keep it easy for us, nice and organized. Let me make a list of negative 18, right? That's either one times 18, or two times nine, or three times six, or four times, nope, doesn't work, five, nope, uh, that's it. These are all the possibilities, but we want it to be negative 18. So let me put a negative in front of the one, two, and the three. And step three says, Think of the, uh, mul uh, or step two is think of the multiples of the number from step one that combine together to give you the B value, which is negative seven. So which pair of numbers combines together to give you negative seven? The uh, negative two and nine, right? But that gives you a positive seven and we want a negative seven. So we know we have the right numbers. We just have the wrong signs. So make that a positive two and a negative nine instead. Let's move on to step three. Write down three. Step three is where it gets weird. We're going to make two fractions. Yep, totally random. Make two fractions. And what goes on the bottom of these fractions on step three, it says get that pair of numbers from step two, get this pair of numbers from step two, and write them as the denominators of two fractions. So I'm going to put a positive two down here and a negative nine over here. Everybody with me? What belongs on top according to step three? The A value, right? Now, what is the A value? Six. So let's put the six right here. Six and six right there, okay? Six. Whoa, that's an ugly six and a six right there. That is step three. And now we get to move on to step four. Step four is to reduce and plug it into your answer format. Six over two reduced. I already know that the answer is three, but I don't want to write it as three. I want to keep it as a fraction three over one, okay? And the 6 over negative 9, uh, I'm going to reduce it by 3, and it becomes 2 
over negative three. Now, I know that you guys are thinking, wait a minute, that negative sign belongs up on top. Yeah, if it was an actual equation and this was my answer, I would move that negative up. But in this case, I want to keep it down there because I'm just using this as a method of getting my factored form. Okay, so my fourth and final step was to reduce and plug. So let me write down the parentheses. Here's the answer format. And what belongs with the x? The top number belongs with the x. So you're going to write down 3x. And the bottom number belongs by itself. And the bottom number is a positive 1, so you put a plus 1. And what belongs in the second parenthesis? Anybody? 2x minus 3, or negative 3. And that's how you factor using Jaime Escalante method.